How does one go from attendee to speaker? How can I funnel the years of experience as a dentist, office manager, hygienist, team member, into a consulting career? These are questions that I'm asked frequently by dental professionals who have grown to a point in their career where they would like to be able to give back to the profession while continuing to grow and stretch themselves and create some business opportunities in the process. Now, I've spoken here before, and you know that we could probably talk today about a wide range of business-related topics, strategy, maybe content development, presentation skills, developing your niche and your brand, marketing. We could talk about the power of networking and the importance of networking with groups such as Speaking Consulting Network, Academy of Dental Management Consultants, and the um, relationships that are cultivated here that sustain us, that become our support network through the years. But friends, I'd really rather talk to you about cats. <laughs> When I was a child, I have a lot of memories of heading to the kitchen in the morning looking for breakfast, but mom wasn't around. I knew she had to be close because breakfast was in the process of becoming. But I typically find her out the back door on the carport, which was a three-sided shelter where there would be boxes and she would put blankets in there and food and water and she would care for the strays that would come along and we always had cats but they never found their way inside. My father's very allergic, but loves animals, and really I grew up in a farm environment. We had chickens and goats and rabbits, always had dogs. We'd have a cow or a horse on the back pasture, and my mom always had cats my entire childhood. I think every stray in the whole little community knew that if it found its way to our yard, it'd be set. So, Let's blame my mom that I'm a crazy cat lady. <laughs> or it could have been Grandma Jewel, my mom's mom. I remember having sleepovers at Grandma's house. I was probably five, maybe preschool, pretty young. And I remember her rubbing my back or singing songs to me, telling me stories as she tried to get me off to sleep. But I remember her bed felt so big. I had a bunk bed at home, and we had this big bed, and Grandma's a tall woman, and there was enough room on that bed for my grandma, me, a dog, and a lovely Siamese that would curl up next to my legs all night long. I think maybe Grandma Jewel had some influence, too. Environment and experience shape us. Would you agree? Flash forward to present day, where we live in the Phoenix metro area. The Humane Society has estimated that there are a quarter of a million free-roaming cats. That's over 250,000 cats living outdoors on their own. I think I fully stepped in to my role as a cat activist about six years ago. Always had dogs, was out walking a dog, our dog um, during that summer and ran across two separate litters of kittens. Started bringing them food and water. And by the time he was about five months old, I finally figured out how to catch and bring home Einstein, a beautiful black tuxedo kitty with a little white bow tie and crazy white hair growing out of his ears. Einie was the first of what would be 35 cats over the last six years from our community that we've helped find homes through adoption, a small handful that have been trapped, neutered, and returned back to the community, and my personal favorite, sorry, sweetheart, foster fail, <laughs> that live in our home now. Our home is a cat rescue and sanctuary. We provide shelter for 12 indoor cats, four backyard cats, and we also care for food and water, and care for our community in association with our homeowners association. So why am I taking your time to tell you this today? What does this have to do with speaking and consulting and growing a business? 
I think you can guess that caring for community cats is my passion. It's my internal motivator. It's my purpose. Studies have shown that having a sense of purpose may very well be the single most powerful contributing factor to one's health and vitality. We know that purpose improves cognition and mental health. It promotes resilience and self-image. Purpose is developed from our life, from our environment, our experiences, our talents and our strengths. It's not about setting a goal or a wish, and it's not about finding something to inspire you. Purpose is about committing. Committing to something that has the power to change your life or change the life of others. It's also something that we can hold on to when times get tough. Now, there are a myriad of self-help experts that can give you guidance in how to awaken to your purpose. We just simply need to Google. <laughs> I found, I don't know where I got this exercise, but I'd love to share it with you today because it's one that I felt really helped me drill down on my purpose in life, and I'd love to share it with you. On our weekly hikes to pass the time, Jeff and I will occasionally just bust out this question. So what'd you do with your billion dollars today? If money truly was not an issue, and once you buy the car and take the trip and all that, what would you do with your day-to-day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day -to -day existence? What activities, passions, causes would you pursue? Think about it. And as you think about it, if you find that you know, I kind of already do, and I thought I think I'd do if I had a billion. I want to say congratulations, because I think that's a real indicator of a successful life. It was the Cheshire cat in Alice in Wonderland that advised Alice that if you don't know where you're going, any road can get you there. Understanding that the success of my business is directly tied to my ability to care for more community cats <laughs> gets me up out of bed in the morning. You know, it's something that really motivates me. It's something that I can hold on to as we ride that roller coaster that is life and business. So I want to encourage you to do the work, and if you've already done it, revisit it. Make sure that you've defined a purpose that really moves you. Take the time. Invest in the soul searching to find and develop the lifetime goals that your business can then support. Important, that's an important first step. Then define the business strategy that will guide your life and business journey. Thank you.